us to come in. Father God, we love you. Thank you for this awesome day. This is the day that you've made. We rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, thank you for Free Life, his vision. Thank you for everybody that's uh, here to pitch in uh, as we journey to change the world. Um, we, we thank you, God, for your word. We thank you, God, for your power. Uh, and even um, in this pivotal time in our country's history, uh, we say that you still, still God, and you're a God that don't change. And so we don't worry about what's going on. A thousand may fall at thy side, 10,000 at thy right hand. You will not come near us. We thank you for safety. We thank you for prosperity. We thank you for the best years of our life. We thank you for the best days of our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, all right, all right. All right. Let's uh, jump right into it. Um, I want to be a good steward of this time. Uh, we, uh, I asked you guys to put together one-minute testimony, and we're going to go, uh, go through those. Um, there's, there's, uh, if you guys can mute your phones, so somebody's got a um, – Almost like a echo happening. All right. Um, <clears throat> uh, Psalms 91 has been, um, I, I, I don't want to read it all, but I want to read um, some of it. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. Uh, and this is a very, very, very powerful uh, reading, and I, I suggest that you just read this and meditate on Psalm 91, uh, because a lot of people are saying a lot of fearful things that's on the internet, and uh, I refuse to take a position of fear. Uh, I walk, uh, the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight, and so that's what we're going to do. Um, and so... Uh, um, that's, that's what we're going to do. All right. And so um, today I want to hear some testimonies, and then I want to also confirm some dates. I know that we have January 9th, of course, but I want to just see, even before we go into the testimonies, um, if, if anybody's gotten a date that we could confirm. I guess everybody... I know we have Marcus. Marcus, you guys have confirmed April something. Uh, April, they, uh, April third for Panama City. Um, and I was and I was I'm waiting to hear back from uh, Tallahassee area about April tenth, the following weekend, that following Saturday, to see if that was legitimate before I mention it to you. Who who uh, who's working with you on that day? Uh, it's me, uh, Tedrick Donaldson, four uh, G. Okay. And uh, I want to say Tammy B is our administrator. Okay. And so um, now some of the dates are going, like if I, I, I'm going to my calendar now and my calendar says Ohio. So I don't know if okay. that's a free life date. Feasible. Or, or whatever. So, but my wife um, needs those dates. So outside of these meetings, okay. make sure that you get even a proposed date to her so that okay. she can, we can start locking it in. Um, other than that, once you get that date, I need some type of image, some, some type of uh, flyer or something, some, some, some sort so we can start pushing and um, getting the act in. Um, and so okay. we, want, we want all the events to be, uh, I'm not really worried about the attendance of the crowd. I, I, I want a lot of acts. I want a lot of uh, people to pray. I want the activity of the stage to be dope. Um, um, and so when we come to different cities, if we can get capture on camera, you know, the talent from each city that, that rocks with this type of genre, um, this this is what what we need to capture. A lot of people don't know that we exist. I mean, we've been doing the music that we've been doing, but still, sometimes it's hard to get it out to the people that really need us. And so, the idea is to take it to the streets, to take it to the people that will not come to church. They just won't come. All right. And so, um, I really want you guys um, 
to get on. Let's just get on it. Start. So if you got those dates, go ahead and give them to me. They won't be confirmed until you confirm okay. it. But at least when she gets something else, okay, you'll know. All right. Um, you know, we'll, we'll know. Hey, there might be a date that he's confirming, and then we'll come back to you on it. But 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 if okay, you don't yeah. tell me, that's what I was going. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. I was going because I, I saw you check your calendar, but you say the tenth is is okay to check for that date. You didn't have yeah, anything keep, on your go calendar. Because because to be honest with you, like my phone is not official with the dates. My <laughs> okay, wife, okay, I just she got the sure. official official somewhere <laughs> in the stash that I can't get to and change the date. So yeah, okay. um, until she kind of signs off on the date. And then sometimes I have to go to football games, basketball games, birthday parties. So, so some of all of that, she got the master calendar, you know? And so, okay, but, I but I just want you to get your dates in because if we don't get the dates in, then we all, we wasting time. Well, April, right, right, right. April, right. So, right. April, I just want to make sure. So, so next year, my go goal is to do 20 of these at least. And I only have one date that, okay. that we have a flyer for. See what I'm saying? So so yeah. not that we're behind at all, but <clears throat> we need to get on it so we'll know what the year looks like. And I, I feel like okay. if we did, sometimes we could do a swing, which means, you know, just a little tour out of okay. out of the panhandle. Okay. Like instead of doing um, Tallahassee and coming back, we just do Friday, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And just now, see, we, talked, we talked about that, and we was going to run that by you, too, but we was going to have another, because we thought about since 4G had uh, solidified the uh, April 3rd, we was talking about hitting uh, Pensacola, Panama City, and Tallahassee in that same weekend, doing like a little. Yeah, if I could do trip. if I can do that, then that'll save time for me and give okay, me another okay. weekend to be, to do it okay. somewhere else. Okay, know, I got you. Instead of. Okay. You know, me coming back the next week, it'll be right, better right. than it. while we there, we just knock it on out. Okay, um, we'll put we'll try to push for that, then try to get it set up like that, and we'll discuss it in our little group meeting. So we can right. try to get the uh, flyers and stuff um, solidified for that. Yeah, man. And sometimes, man, we just got to step out on faith and just get the pushing. You know. Uh, okay, I guess. I guess. Uh, we gonna get calls from business people. We gonna get we gonna get help. But we just got to start. Sometimes movement, man, you just got to start moving. You know, right. it's going to be big. It's going to be big. We, we, we have no proof of it but faith. And we're just going to start walking. Amen. Amen. All right. I got you. All right. Thank so, you. Uh, so, at this, once we get to 20, um, then uh, I want to start planning big for 2021. Now, I have this... Uh, uh, vision for 2021. I, I think I announced it and said 20, uh, not 2021. I have this vision for 2022, but I said 2021. I'm sorry, Riri. And I know you was like, ah, no, to, to, to rent out, um, the Georgia World Congress Center or the, uh, Georgia International, uh, uh, center here in Atlanta and to do a big event, um, where we bring everybody from all the cities, but I, we're not ready for that because we need to get past 2021 first and then do a big, I'm talking about two or three stages, probably three or four stages, uh, a hip hop stage, a choir stage, a jazz stage, or just, I mean, of just music. So I'm trying to see how we're going to do that. Um, but that's 18 months away. And uh, I, I believe by faith, man, we just get to move and we'll be, we'll be fine. So I, I need to start solidifying dates. Miss Gigi, um, if you guys have a date, I, I need to start solidifying dates. And if I can, while we're in um, Texas, if we can do a three city run and knock it out, if not, that's fine. That's too much. That's fine. You know, you know, but just to get in neighborhoods and preach Jesus, just to get get it moving, so people can see the logo and keep moving. So okay. uh, bring people to Jesus. So however we could do it, but a weekend, if you want me to do uh, your city, I suggest that we do it in a weekend, 
that we do Texas, and then we, I mean, do we might do Dallas drive to y'all, and y'all's like, you know, Tallahassee might be two hours from, but in Texas, boy, it's like 10 hours to the next city. <laughs> to the next city. <laughs> nah, it's not that bad. It's about four hours. All right, Eastern all right. Well, that, that ain't bad. Okay, so so we could do. That's a drive. Not, well, well, yeah, we can knock them out, though. If we can knock them out and do at least two. You know, don't have to push okay. three, but do two and, and get and, and and if we start thinking summertime for, for that, you know, I know we're gonna be aggressive with Florida uh in the top of the year. So, you know, I know they're doing April. Uh somebody else just hit me and I I wanted to ask, I just seen her. She, she gone already. Um Miss, more like January. Oh, um Miss Jan? Yeah. No. Hey, yo, okay, hey, yo. Uh, from Deerfield. Miss, um, did you say, how you doing, ma'am? Somebody hit me from Gainesville about Monday the 18th. Do you know that person? Uh, yeah, uh, unmute. Can you unmute? There we go. Oh, uh, uh, they, they, they're trying to do a Martin Luther King, just like the, the event that you was trying to do. Wow. Um, uh, uh, in Gainesville, um, January 18th, Monday, January 18th in Gainesville. And um, Wow. Don't know, I, don't have a clue who it is. No. Okay. Wow. I thought that that was odd because I was like, wait, wait a minute. Yeah, because that's what we were supposed to be doing originally. Yeah. And then this came up. Came up came about because you were you were unavailable right. on the 18th. So so is so. Deerfield um doing the Martin Luther King thing? Yes, we still are. And okay. what we were doing was remember originally we were bringing our homegrowns back home to do a um you know a jam out session after mm -hmm. the parade and before the speakers come on. So yep. we're still having that and thus far it's just still the same few um uh we have Mark Strawbridge, Courtney Gurley, um, Marcus Howell, um, and then I think David Berry is going to be maybe singing. He used to work on cruise ships. That's all who we have for the entertainment. Okay, and uh, and we can promote it to 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 make it a two week. You know. Well, uh, that's what I was hoping that we'd be able to do on the day of our concert in Deerfield is to promote the next week or, or ahead of time as well. So as soon as they can get me some flyers and stuff going, then sure. I, I, if when sure we'll when is um? So yours is on a month that following Monday. Yes. The Monday Tuesday. All right. And what uh? Do you have an image already? They don't. The city hasn't produced anything yet. No. Because if we if we need to, so that they can have more legs for what we're doing as well, mm -hmm. cross promote both of the events and then okay. you promote you promote what i'm doing and then I, we promote what you're doing so on the flyer one side is what i'm doing and on the other side is what you're going to be doing the next week so okay it, 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 it'll give more legs to yours it'll give more legs to mine uh you know and um i know i know you're going through the city and i know i know what that's like and i know this red tape um if they, if you have a flyer person down there, uh, maybe we need to start working on a flyer for your end. If you give me um, the lineup on what they're doing, yeah. For that and, and for did the you could, did you see our flyer? Yes, I saw it. Um, but uh, Kira told me they had to do some changes because of the address and the name and the picture. The pastor's photo still wasn't on yet. Okay. But yes. And so and so um and then when we flip it on the back, then the other event can be there. Right. The Martin Luther King. And we can cross promote. Yes. And so uh if you get an approval, okay. If you just get an approval that you can do a flyer. Okay. Then bring it to me. I have them. Okay. And then if 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 you guys can handle uh uh, if the city can uh, handle, uh, you know, printing it, and I can put in with it, we can split 50-50 since we got both, you know, have, you know, 
uh, I just feel like it's it's November, so we need to stop getting these flyers out, putting them in barber shops, blah 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 blah. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. And, and so I want everybody to understand that when you get your city down down and done, that these are going to be the procedures that we need. We need flyers. We need we need legs. We need to put them in places. We need to promote, you know, uh, if we need to do radio, if we need to do blogs, if we need to do uh, announcements, maybe a video announcement for certain churches to play or what have you, then okay. we need to do that. Uh, right now, everything is on us to produce. If you guys can help in any area, uh, if you have an expertise in the area, then you could just be the person that do that for each city, then that'll be some muscle that we have. So when we come to your city, then um, uh, we uh, we already got a, a, a an engine, and what I'm trying to create is an engine so that when we go to a city, it's nothing. When Australia come, it's nothing. We got people in the city. To, we got the flyers. We got the promotion online. We got the this. We got the conversations. We got all of that, and so that's what we need to be working on our engine, and so that okay. each city that's added, that you're gonna have some cities um that come once we get our machine going they're gonna come and they might just say hey man we just need help boom we just know how to take action everybody know what to do boom 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 and as the cities get added god expands what we're doing uh but we don't there's not a strain on the on a city that don't have the help that we can help them. you know so that's why these calls are important because we're trying to figure out how to build this engine. Listen, man, African-American men and women between the ages of 13 to 30, they do not go to church. It, they don't go. I know we want them to go, but they don't. And so we, go, we can sit behind the pulpit and say, y'all need to come to church. All we want, they ain't going to hear us, and they ain't going to come. And, so, and then we ain't been going to them. You know, and so right. we gotta we gotta do something different. So um, God's put in my heart uh, to do this, and I don't know where it's gonna go, but I know it's, I know at least we're gonna start it. Okay. Um, and, and and so we're gonna go to. So thank you. So um, if you can get back with me about the flyer, uh, yes. Is it okay to talk? Uh, has the event been approved? Yours yet? I'm not sure Kiara is working on all of that the logistics, so I haven't spoken with her this week. And matter of fact, I'm, I'm still not getting um, the email communications for like to, to create the backdrop behind me and for the assignments and stuff. So I'm not somehow or another I'm not getting those. I'm I, last text I got was last week for the conference call. Riri, so can you somehow post another, all your stuff, please? Riri, Rihanna, right here is the person that sends okay. all information. Um, could you I, I can't hear you, Riri. Send me, send me my number. All right, so that send me my number in the chat. So at, anytime we get a new city that want to do something, so I'm going to find out who is this, who this Gainesville person is. Once we put them in into our system, then because I wanted to have a, a, a let's say we, we built a team of excellence and we coming off like like white people do, to be honest with you, when they come, them stages, them, them lights, they look really good. And it sounds really good, you know. Uh I love free life. We got we 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 stepping it up, you know, we need help, you know, we're gonna paint our stage black, we're gonna get them lights up there too, we're gonna get our sound right too. But let's just say we get it, we got it to that level. When somebody comes, they might not have it in their city on that level, and they might not, not have even seen it on that level. You know, you, you got some people that say it don't take all that. Man, it take all that and more. Doggone the, the mainstream, they they spend all type of money for, for two minutes of your your eye your eye candy. So so we gotta figure out how to do it. So once we get it there, and then somebody from another city who don't have as much comes into the fold, then we gotta be able to rally around that person, get the flyers, get them the swag. Cause some cities, when we come, it's gonna blow their minds because they've never seen it. All right, and so that's what we wanna do. We want 
young people, we want kids, we want older people too, to be like, I've never seen anything or experienced anything like that in my life. Um, <clears throat> we were in Pensacola this weekend, and uh, 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 we were doing a voting thing, and I did the Oprah song and ended up with the hallelujah, man, and the power of God fell, and we were shouting, me and my wife, we were jumping all on stage, and, uh, and I've gotten just about two or three um, messages from people that just says they've never experienced the anointing with hip hop. They just, they've just never seen it. You know, they, they, they think that the only way that it could come is, hey, man, let the preacher say it. They, they think that that's the only way. And I'm, I'm like, think about how big our God is, how creative our God is. Look how many trees there are. Look how many birds there are. Look how many fish there are. And you think he's going to make one type of music? No. So we've given all the other genres to the devil, and you think that the God is going to express himself through one type of music? No way. And so, but people are, are, are just kind of getting acclimated with, with really, really what's the strangest thing to see for a lot of people is black men, I'm gonna say something, black men who are masculine worshiping God. It, it's weird to them because we're the ones that usually cause the trouble. So when you see a real one, like, I look, like it just looks weird to certain people, especially to us. You know what I mean? And so that's the image that we're trying to push. Young girls that looks look fly, got the fly look. You know what I'm saying? Worshiping God. That's the image that we're trying to push. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what, it, right now, sometimes people feel like, man, I, I got to be old to worship your God because all I see is people that's older than me. And I'm like, nah, man, uh-uh, uh-uh. You can worship God right now. But we got to get other people that look like them in order, you know. So that that is our task. That that's why the stage got to be fly. That's why the lights got to be fly. That's why everything's got to be hot. So come on stage, you gotta have that swagger for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You got to put your best foot forward. Don't get on the stage talking about take all mistakes for love. I'm gonna take your. I'm gonna turn your mic off. We ain't taking all mistakes for love. No, you should have been practicing. The Bible says play skillfully. You should have been practicing on your skill. Take all mistakes for love. Ain't going to be no mistakes. We're going to give God the glory. You know, on the on real, if we're talking about kings, man, if you messed up in front of a real king, they'd be like, off with your head. Right. <laughs> so, so, of course, it ain't, thank God for Jesus that it ain't that. But we 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 are not going to compromise the quality that we're going to give for God uh, at all. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to do my best to 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 do what I got to do for God and give him the glory in excellence. All right? And so that's why we're trying to work so hard to make it happen. So that's what I want in every city. That's what I want in every state. Uh, everything ain't going to be overproduced like, like that. Sometimes we just got to do what we got to do with, with a stage and a bullhorn. Like, you know? If that's what we got, that's what we got. But I don't want it to be that because we didn't try. Mm -mm. You know, if we if we try and it didn't happen and we just went out there and we just gave God the glory with what we got, then boom. But I, I I'm not doing I'm not doing that. I'm not letting the world outdo us. Not not off effort. Mm -mm. I'm I'm at least try. I saw the um Mango Fest um flyer. That mug hot. The Mango Fest flyer is hot. However, our flyer is hot too. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> I I didn't want them to, to put the Mango Fest. Mango Fest is a, a big event they do every year in Deerfield Beach. Um, uh, I didn't want them to see my flyer and be like, oh, that's the churchy. Like, we ain't going to that. Now, when you put your flyer up to my flyer, yeah, okay, that might be something. That we know the Mango Fest gonna be this, but that might be something. I think they got the um Drew Hill coming. They got uh who else? Ooh. They got who else, who else coming? Ah. But it's the mainstream acts, big acts that's coming. And uh, you know, and then you know, we got our flyer with us. So hey, hey, let's <laughs> let's go.
It's, amen. So, so I'm excited, and we, and we want to uh, take it to the level um, so that we can give God the praise and glory. So I just wanted to do that real quick. Um, I want to start doing these uh, testimonies. Um, uh, your assignment last week was to um, give your testimony in one minute. Um, as if you had to tell somebody what God did for you in one minute, what if they told you that Jesus is not real or man, I tried that church thing and, and you guys are on the elevator and you got one minute at a time, what will you tell them? And how, if, how, how would you feel about, you know, what, what type of uh, excitement will you have? Man, man, I'm telling you, bro, God brought me from a mighty long way, bro. I'm telling you, man, I was promiscuous, man. My, I almost lost my my marriage almost like my wife over that jump, bro. Man, but the grace of God, he brought me from a mighty long way. And now I just celebrated 19 years of marriage, bro. Man, God has blessed me, bro. I've been nominated for two Grammys. I've, I've won Stellas. God has taken me all over the world. And I'm and I'm still serving him just like I got saved yesterday, bro. Man, I'm telling you, you try this Jesus, your life will never be saved. That's what I'm talking about. And I need that fire. All right? Ladies and gentlemen, my wife is on the call. Yes, my wife is on the call. All right, so um, we're gonna we're gonna go. I want to hear from you guys. Um, remember, man, your leaders. So bashfulness is not. You got to get over that on this call. Can't be bashful, your leaders, and you gotta be. You gotta you gotta go for it. All right, all right. Let's let's try. Uh, D. Collins, since you uh, had uh, trouble last week, we're going to start with you. Let's get it. All right. Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm going I'm to I'm do the clock, but I ain't, I'm not worried about the clock. Just get it out. Ready? <clears throat> Ready. Sit. Go. Yes. Yeah, so my testimony is uh, the things that God has delivered me from. I know what it's like to deal with abuse. Uh, verbal abuse, and those who have preyed upon you. And I've been holding on to unforgiveness for a mighty long time. But when God got a hold of me, he have taught me how to forgive and how to move on. If God can help me how to get through that type of trauma, I know he can do it for you. So my best advice for you is to try Jesus. Yeah. Come on, boy. Excellent. That probably just helped somebody on this call. Praise well, God. Well. Praise <laughs> Praise God. That's awesome. All right. All right. Let's go to uh come on, Miss Johnson. Well, all right. Uh, I had to jump off and get back on. I'm okay, but I think I know where we at. Let's go. All right. Three, two, one. Hello, guys. I'm a single mom with kids, and I've gone to school, and I want to speak to all of the single moms out there who think they can't do it because they have such a hurt, heavy burden on their shoulders, and sometimes they look around and they don't have anybody but themselves to look at when they see in the mirror. But I just want you to be encouraged and know that God is never going to leave you. Like he said in his word, he would never leave you nor forsake you. All you got to do is put one foot in front of the other, and he'll take the rest of the steps for you. He'll lead you. He'll guide you into your destiny. So don't give up. Keep believing in God. Keep trusting in God. Lean on his word. And, and stand on his word in the name of Jesus. I know he'll be there for you. But y'all got preaching, y'all. What? You got preaching. That means uh -oh. you preach. Oh wow. That's good. That's good. 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 All right, Kios. Oh. Here we go. Three, two, one. All right, I just want to speak to you guys about people who have been through some things that um, might have stopped you from progressing in life. I mean, I grew up in a household with two parents, but um, they didn't have the best example of love. Basically, growing up, I thought love of love is looking, you know, I looked in the wrong places for love. Went to college, was promiscuous. I ended up getting gang raped and trying to look, you know, figuring out how am I supposed to make this thing work um, after my trust was gone with men. Uh, got married to a man. Uh, basically lived 12 years, was abused mentally, emotionally, and physically. Um, but God turned it around one day when I, I thought to myself, I want better for myself. Moved to Georgia, brought my kids here. And I mean, God has really turned my life around. He's brought me closer to him. 
um, not only through free life, but also I was able to use my um, profession as a social work and therapist to share um, with others and also help heal them through some of the things they've been through. I use my music as a way to express my hurt and my pain and also do a testimony to others. So all I want to say is, um, as long as you keep your eyes on God and let him guide your feet, your footsteps, he will bring you through. He will bring you through. If I can do it, you can too. Wow. Let's see, I ain't even know that stuff. Wow. <laughs> That's powerful. Come on, Kyosha. All right. Well, y'all, I wish I had me an organ player in this thing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. Uh, that right. Come on, bro. GCS. All right, Three, him. three two, one. Can you hear me? Yep. All right. Um, I think. This this testimony I have, it ain't just for me because I wasn't the only one included in it. It's all me and my family. Um, for a lot of y'all know that, you know, we were we were homeless, you know what I mean? Staying with different friends and just not having something of our own, even though we were working, you know what I mean? I'm grinding, busting my tail, you know what I mean? It just got to a point where we didn't, we couldn't get right, it seemed like, but, but God. You know what I mean? So our testimony is that even though we were staying in hotels and living with friends, you know what I mean? God blessed us to have been blessed to get like three cars in one day. God blessed us to get our home, you know what I mean? A house, we got a, a, another car. I was, blessings was just coming out of nowhere. You know what I mean? It's like, as soon as you open the door, it was a blessing standing right up. And through the words, through the words, Kajo was was preaching to us during all of these these free life um these free life church services we had like taking that word and just abiding in God's word and trusting him and knowing that he got our back he opened up plenty of doors for us so if you're a family out there you know what I mean y'all y'all hurting and y'all thinking that God ain't doing it for y'all because it's not coming quick enough delay is not denial you know what I mean he wants you to have exactly what you want to have you know what I mean and you'll get it if you just continue to trust in him Oh, awesome, 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 awesome. Man, I I I I saw y'all's personally and um I, the preaching be coming out. Lord Jesus, I'm trying to hold it like ah ah but I want I want to say something. Miss Janice, I'm coming to you next. Um um the Lord was dealing dealing with me about believing for miracles. And he was saying to me, for you, and I, he was saying to me, for you, I am not the God of miracles. And I'm like, and I was like, he's like, he's like, he's like, imagine your kids believing you for a meal every day. They don't believe that. They just expect that. Uh, there's an expectation. And then now he says, wherever you have to stretch your faith in the area of miracles for something that you've never seen or something that you've never done, I might be a God for you in that area, but then you'll get used to it and I'll become your dad. So I, I, I'm trying to say this the right way, but I saw them, GCS and his wife, believe in God every night for money to stay in the extended stay. And I, then I saw them get blessed with them cars. Now I see them in their own, in their own house. They don't have to believe God for a miracle where their, their expectation has increased to where they live in their own house. And now they're a, they're a, they, 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 his wife is a miracle to other people. I'm, I'm trying to say it the right way. I'm, I'm, I've been working on it. But God said, I can turn your miracles to everyday expectation. To whereas I'm not, see, if, if in a relationship where you don't know me, that's, the, that's where it's a miracle to you. If I give you something, you don't know me, I come off the street. 
then you don't know me. It's a miracle to you. But if I know you, if I have a relationship with you, then you know it's an expectation. He's somebody that I expect to come through. And so God is like, start telling people to start meeting me at my expectation and not saying that I'm only a God of miracles. I want to be a father and not just a God. Woo! God wants to be your father and not just your God. And so God is saying, I know that there are people that, that's believing for miracles. I'm believing for miracles and, and, and areas myself. But I, I believe that I haven't given God, my daddy, that part of me yet. And, that, and that's the part where it's, it's, you stretch your faith. But I've seen it. I've seen them come from needing a place to having a place to now getting money to provide a place for other people. I've seen it. And so God want to take you to a place, I, I hope I'm saying it right, from, from needing miracles every month or needing miracles every week or needing miracles. Oh, man, a miracle. We can, and I, I know some of y'all are tired of needing a miracle and you just now want to expect and God just do it because you know he going to do it. Hallelujah. So, so praise God. I'm, I'm sorry, bro. I jumped on that, that ad lib on your verse, but my God, I, I ain't preached. We ain't had regular church all year, so it's like I be trying to preach to any any way I could get my preach off. Glory be to God. That's powerful. I know we got a, a couple minutes. All right, all right, Miss Janice. Okay. You ready? Yes, ma'am. Three, <laughs> two, one. I know you get yourself together. It's all good. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you. Thank God. Um, thank God for this opportunity of testimony. And until you have trials and until you had a test, you cannot give a testimony. I like to thank God for where he's brought me from. I was down with back surgery working for hospice for 16 years, helping out blacks from Palm Beach to Broward to educate them, to let them know that there's help out there for them. They don't have to, parents don't die alone. Families don't have to be alone. I was that liaison for them. And I walked and I talked hospice and I, and I made an a impact, a great impact, Tri-County. But then it came to a point where I had back surgery and the job told me that there was nothing else that they could, I could do for them. After I put them on the map and produced a program, which no one else was doing in the country, was a Black African American program to reach out Black people. Hmm. I was down. I had back surgery. I could not walk. I could not talk. I could not bathe myself. I was in diapers, depends for a year. My husband had to come through the nursing home every day and check on me while he delivered his UPS packages. I had families praying for me. I had loved ones coming to see about me, but God. Hallelujah. And today I can tell you I had to start over from a spinal tap and from rehab into a nursing home twice for two months, a month at each time, but God. And I thank God today that it had not been for the twins called Grace and Mercy. I don't know where I will be. I don't know nothing but to trust in him and nothing but to believe in him. And know what I said, if I continue to stand on his word that he promised to do what he said he is, we would do. He's a God of mercy, a God of favor, and a God of faith. And I stand on his word Amen. and Canton, I pray that every day that when you come through Deerfield, that you come home and you bring it back. So people know that God gives life freely. He takes life freely. And if you don't answer to him and if you don't obey his word, he will come to you. You will answer to him, either staying up, standing up or lying down. So get it together and let's bring it home. And I thank God for giving me back what the devil thought he took away from me. Hallelujah. Come on. Glory Thank be you. to God. Lord, we worship you. Thank you, God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to Thank God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Glory be to God. 
I'm oh, not man. perfect, but I serve a, we, we serve a perfect God. Thank yes, we God. do. All right, we're gonna keep moving. This this is uh great. This is great. Um come on, Jay gathers. Three, two, one. Well, most of y'all have heard the cliche. I don't look like what I've been through, uh, but I'm a living testimony regarding that there. Uh, I grew up the byproduct of a uh, two alcoholic parent. I was in and out of the foster care. Uh, I was actually molested at age 10. Um, you know, that uh, put me in a state of mind while I was actually very promiscuous. Uh, I ended up having uh, two kids out of wedlock. I was just unstable in all my ways. Um, had a sister shot. Uh, she actually lives. She wears a scar and that, um, you know, to remind us of that every day. And I actually had a brother shot. He actually died from that. I'd have seen everything. The things I've seen, you know, the average man or woman would have lost their sanity. Um, I, like I said, I was unstable in all my ways. But God, uh, you know, through my relationship and my faith in him, he placed me on solid ground. And, uh, you know, he basically, you know, turned my circumstances around and I allowed uh, those circumstances to just basically minister healing to others. So I am living proof that uh, through God, you can bounce back from anything. Wow. Man of God. And we, we welcome you to Atlanta. And he's been on the job for a month and about to get another promotion. The favor of God is on you, man. The favor of God is on you, bro. Praise That's God. why God told me to help. You got faith on you. The best is yet to come. You made the right move by coming sure. to Atlanta. Praise God. All right, all right. All right, YP. Here we go. Three, two, one. What's up, my name is YP. Uh, YP stands for a lot of things. Uh, young prophet, uh, young poet. I grew up in a single parent home. I watched my mom run two bonding companies. I watched family members sell drugs in and out of Atlanta from the bluff to a bucket. Uh, Brown Mill Road, Cleveland Avenue, that's where a lot of things that I was exposed to, guns and drugs, blue lights in the basement. Um, so when I got in middle school, one thing that I knew was getting money. I was book smart, but I moved with my dad. And when I moved with my father, he was working from five in the morning to 10 at night. So I could play sports all day long, but I still got to deal with game bangers that stand outside across the street from the school, from the park. That Mark Trail Park, I went to McNeil Middle School. And it was either, you know, you either with it or you ain't. So I stood by myself. I didn't ask to be in the game. I was approached to be in the game because I fought a lot of people. And it felt like a, a comfort zone of me, me not knowing if I was going to live today and see tomorrow. Didn't know if I was going to walk down the street because people getting the shootouts from the hemp to Second Avenue. Uh, friends getting killed in front of me, friends getting killed while I'm getting prepared to go to work. And my mom told me that I got to trust somebody. She said, the trust is messed up because you've tried a lot of things. I tried game banging, I tried selling drugs. I tried selling down with different type of women, but I didn't, I didn't trust. And God showed me one time to trust him. My grandma passed away. Both of my grandmas passed away in a 12 month span. And God told me, he said, if you trust me, I'll allow you to see things that you've never seen before. I started to see spirits. I started to smell spirits. I started to hear spirits. As I cling to his word, I will burn incense. I was about 19 years old when I did my first sermon. And he told me, don't have no more fear when you love or when you trust. Because I lay my hands on you, 
and I've been robbed over 12 times. I've had AK-47 dude told me if I move, he's gonna take my legs away. My other partner getting shot in the shop. But he, he mm -hmm. always told me he's gonna keep his hands on me. And he made that promise to me at 12. And I used to wake up, still didn't care. So I'm gonna say this. If you if you're afraid of love, if you're afraid of trust, trust God. Cause you're gonna feel something that's gonna take over you. It's gonna take over your mind, body, soul, and spirit. Don't let your outside shell be the definition of you. Keep your temple clean. Allow him to work his his miracle on you. Cause his his miracle is not for you, it's for somebody else. So when you love and you trust him and you obey his word, that man gonna give you, he gonna let you see some stuff that your family members and your friends would never thought that you could see. Mm. That's it. Mm. Excellent. Excellent, Josh. Hallelujah. All right, Marcus. I know we 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 that was a long elevator. Now we got it. We got, but that was annoying. I didn't want to stop you. The, the the power of God is working. So go ahead, go ahead, Marcus. Okay. All right, I'm uh, Marcus Green, same OG. Uh, grew up in a. Uh, I was one of them kids, a preacher kid, born into the church before I was in the church. My parents were both teenage ministers. In the church my whole life, knew the word, was taught the word, but didn't feel like I was part of the church. It was an older school type of church, so really wanted to have that young feel. So when I turned 18, left and went off to college to FAMU, was promiscuous, got a son, ended up dropping out to go to the military. But I had an accident at 19 where I split my head open in two places coming home from work. Still, that was my first wake-up call. Still, then once I got better, you know, I promised God, you know, blah, blah, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this got worse, ended up joining the military, got further into the street life, started hanging out with the wrong people, selling dope, you know, that type of thing, and smoking weed and drinking alcohol. But God would never let me be comfortable in my sin. I was always trying to figure out why I keep getting stopped, why I keep getting arrested, why I keep, you know, this stuff keep happening. I ended up getting uh, shot in the back of my leg, shot at, stabbed in my arm, hit with a beer bottle in the back of my head. So God allowed me to live to about 30, uh, I'd say about 33, and he chopped me all the way down to I had a life changing experience where I couldn't do nothing but say, he pretty much said, you're going to live for me or you're going to die. Hmm. And I remember I had a restless night, couldn't sleep, couldn't do nothing. Told my Achilles tendon playing ball. So I was just stuck and up moving back home with my parents. Almost like he took me to a rebirth, so to speak. And while I'm home, I ended up having to go to church with my parents. And God was working on me the whole time while I'm at home. I'm not understanding it. I was trying to rap in the streets. Didn't want to rap when I came back to the church, calling myself getting, getting back right because I didn't think it was rapping in the church. And one night I remember God was on some good sleeping, uh, some good medication for my Achilles. Still couldn't sleep, had, hadn't sleep about three, four nights. And God just said, if you just say yes, you can get some rest. And I just kept going in my spirit and I just couldn't understand it. And so I found out I, I crawled off the bed onto my knees and I just said, God, yes to whatever it is. I'm tired of running. I'm tired of going through. Just help me. And when I got up, I laid down and I slept like a baby. The next night he started giving me lyrics. I didn't know there was lyrics at the time until I started writing them. He said, this is going to be your first song. If you just step out on faith, I'll open the doors. So I ended up doing it at one youth Sunday at church. And it just spread like wildfire after that. God just started opening doors, opening doors. Long story short, December 29th, this past December 29th, I had been going hard for God for at least two and a half years doing preaching. I'm an ordained elder now, all of that. God took me from the prodigal son road back to royalty. I had a car accident coming home from work, broke my neck, back, rib cage, bruised my lungs, skull fractures. The doctor said if I didn't, I should have been either dead or paralyzed. Uh, but God said, this was not me. This was the devil trying to prevent you from getting to where I'm, I was getting ready to take you and to test your faith, almost like Job. He only up now because you bless him. But I'm here to tell you that I even uh, 
I even impressed the doctors with where I'm at right now. I just performed for the Souls to the Poles this past Saturday. I was on mm-hmm. a, I was on, I was on bed rest from December to May on the walker and the neck brace from May to August mm-hmm. on a cane up until two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And God, the, even when I was on bed rest, God was giving me music. A lot of music you hear now, I was, I was. Perf- I was recording in my bedroom with a neck brace on because I had to get it out of me because God said that's intended to help somebody. So mm-hmm. I felt like if you spared my life, you did it for a reason. And I'm not going to take you for granted anymore. If, if I had in the past, forgive me. Let's amp it up. Listen, when they saw me Saturday, all the people that know what I had been through, it was, man, we had church at the courthouse. <laughs> I told them, listen, I'm a miracle. I ain't supposed to be walking. I ain't supposed to be alive. I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be dead and gone, but God said something different. Won two, three uh, uh, little music awards while I was on bed rest. Nominated for different gospel music awards while I'm on bed rest. Mm-hmm. Not for the fact that I'm out here trying to look for it, but God said, I told you, if you do what I called you to do, you ain't got to chase the stuff you were chasing in the streets. I'm going to have it chasing you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all that stuff will be adding unto you. And I thank God for, for waking me up because I was in the streets trying to fit a round ball into a square pig. Hmm. And God will make it, if you got a call on your life, God will make you uncomfortable in your sin till you come home. Just say yes. Good stuff. Wow. Man, we need to, I, I'm going to keep this and play this again. This is, uh, we're recording this, and this is super powerful. Uh, after a uh, uh, letter, and then my wife. And then um, who is uh? Well, they say Charlotte, but I don't see. Uh, is that you, Charlotte? Yeah, she is. Oh, she's driving. Okay, she driving. All right, all right, all right. Uh, okay. So letter, then my wife, uh, then Charlotte, then Stacy, and we should be done. Yeah. So y'all don't. Y- I know y'all giving it to uh, seven o'clock. I'm gonna be. I want to be a good steward. So, um, give them to me. Elevator. All right. Three, two, one. All right. I'm gonna just piggyback off of where my husband was talking about and how we started. Basically, looking for a house. God told me to go back to where we came from. And at that point, I only had sixty dollars, and he told me to go pay for the room of somebody at the hotel where we stayed at. So that from that point, that day I asked people around me, we raised like, I think it was $250 the first day and we were able to pay a week in somebody's room that day. And that was like the 24th by May 1st, the 24th of April, by May 1st, we were approved for our house. So I'm just telling you, like, it don't matter what you have, the little bit that you have. You don't have to be T.I., you don't have to be tiny, all of them that be giving out stuff during Christmas. You don't have to do all that. Use what God gave you. Use the people around you, and God will do so much more than you could ever think or imagine, just like his word said. Hallelujah. All right, all right, all right. Good stuff. All right, babe. All right, can y'all hear me? Because we're in Hear me? Yep. Hey. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, you know, turn the audio all the way off. All right. All right. Uh, uh, you know what? Yeah, hey, you can come in. Sorry, y'all. We in the same room. Okay. My name is Ramona Jones, and. I just want to encourage you to put God first and learn how to serve uh, in his spirit. Um, I grew up uh, depressed. Most of my adolescent teenage years was just depression. I dealt with a lot of depression. I woke up every day like, Lord, why don't you go ahead and just take me? I'm, I'm done. I, I have no purpose here. I, what am I here for? I'm just here taking up air, taking up space. And too afraid to take my own life, thank God. But every single day I woke up like, God, I thought you were going to take me tonight, 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 tonight. So he taught me how to take the focus off of myself and to serve other people. And that's where I found the purpose. I found purpose uh, just being a great friend, uh, 
being um really being a, a great friend before I got married. Then once I got married, it was about my husband. And then once the kids came, it was about them. So once I just learned how to focus on them and serve uh, serve God through them, then the depression was gone. And, it, and I never had to deal with it again. I, I woke up every day grateful for another day. So if you're feeling any kind of depression in your life, you feel like you have no purpose and you feel like uh, you are here for nothing. God doesn't make any mistakes. We all know that. God doesn't uh, just put people here just to fill up the earth. He got better things to do than just put you here for nothing. So focus on hearing, tuning your ear to hear from him, and he will tell you exactly what you should be doing in your life. That's it. Yeah. Now that, I watched my wife battle through uh, depression and she beat that thing, man. Uh, it, it was tough for her to even um, look in the mirror and say that she loved herself. We had we had some bouts, but um, and I'm so blessed to be with that girl for 19 years. Amen, amen. All right, all right. Uh, uh, Charlotte, Stacy, and then Jazz, and then we, we, we're done. Uh, did I miss anybody? No, and Reed. Reed always trying to sneak out. So come on. All right, all right, uh, uh, Charlotte. All right, hey, y'all. Um, I'm Charlotte, and I just want to encourage you all to let you know that God will fill the gaps. Anything missing or broken, he will fill it. Um, at the beginning of the year, I pray that God will bring my kids' fathers back into their lives because they've been absent for over a year. And um, and my youngest uh, son, he only seen his father once since he was born. But uh, during that that time of prayer and fasting, I prayed for their fathers, and I trusted God to to do what what needed to be done in their lives because uh, mainly they're girls, and I know girls need their dads. And um, even though it hurt me and I was angry, I still I didn't speak. Uh, against their fathers, but I continue to trust God and pray for them. And so um, by doing that, God has placed people in my, in my life to, to fill those gaps. And, and also, I believe God is bringing my husband as well to be that father figure for my son. I have one son and three girls. So I just want to encourage y'all to trust God and believe that he will do what he said he will do. Amen, amen. Praise God. It is so. Yeah, when he comes, we're we going to pat him down. Make sure he's right. Yeah, yeah, we're going <laughs> to. All right, yeah, good man. stuff, good stuff. All right, uh, Stacy, who's next? Stacy, come on, Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. So really quick, um, earlier in the summer, I had was having some pain in my abdomen consistently. So I went to the doctor, they did an ultrasound, and they kept saying they saw these large growths on my ovaries, but they wouldn't say what it was. They just kept saying they saw it, they saw it, they saw it. So they wouldn't say what it was, so I told them it was nothing. Did another ultrasound. Uh, well, did a, they did a cancer screening, and then they did an ultrasound. The doctor came in the room and high-fived me and said, Mrs. Wheeler, I don't even see the growths anymore. There's nothing there. Um... We're not sure what the pain is. We can prescribe you something for pain, but we don't see anything anymore. At that time, I had also taken a leave of absence from work, and it was unpaid. Literally every week since June, I have gotten a check in the mail up and literally till two days ago. Every week. Whoa. Come on! <laughs> what? We need an organist in this thing, what? Good grace is alive. Hallelujah. And girl, you better not be going through that stuff and not telling nobody. I'm telling y'all if I got growth anywhere. Oh. I, I know. Wow. Hallelujah. All right. We almost done. That's all right. Uh 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 jazz. Let's do it. Jazz. Jazz. Uh, can you go to Riri first? I'm doing DoorDash. I'm like pulling up to the house. 
Okay, get tall. All right, go ahead, uh, Riri. I just want to say God is good. In 2010, I was involved in a four car accident. The car was totaled. Uh, I walked away with only a little soreness. Uh, that same year, riding with a friend, uh, we were blinded by our oncoming car and lost control of the vehicle, swerving 180 one way, 180 the other way, shot across the street, hit a pole. That pole stopped us from going into a pool in somebody's backyard. Let's fast forward six years later to 2016, uh, in the car with my brother, getting off an exit on 285, we were clipped from the back and spun across seven lanes of 285. The guardrail stopped us. And when we stopped, we were facing the same way traffic was going, not touched by the oncoming traffic, walked away with a chipped tooth. When I hit the pole, it was a chipped tooth. Let's fast forward a little more to 2017. I was hospitalized for a week. My whole body was in pain. Uh, they kept me, they ran tests, no diagnosis. Thank you for the, the, the hydration and the pain meds because they found nothing wrong. Two weeks later, I went back for an emergency surgery because I had an abscess that was growing that I didn't know nothing about that was inches from my bile. And they told me had I waited any longer, it was septic and could have took me out. Look, I just want to say, y'all, it's, it's a reason we're here. Sunday night, I had the same pain I had that took over my body, but it was gone the next morning. I'm obedient now, but then I was a little hard-headed. We go through things for a reason, but we make it hard on ourselves. God has already bared that pain. So if you trust and believe in him and stand on his word, he will see you through. Just answer the call, y'all. Amen. Jeez! Y'all gonna start preaching. I'm telling you. This is anointed right here. Glory be to God. Wow. All right. Uh, uh, come on. We over time. Uh, Jazz, let's do it. Wow. But this has been super anointed. I feel the power of God. Come on, Jazz. Stop eating them people food. Come on, Jazz. <laughs> She gone. Hold on. I'm trying to get on here. Can you sit, hear me? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Go. Oh, okay. Um, well, my testimony is more about forgiveness. Um, I had I had asked God to show me how to forgive people, or particularly, to be specific, my kid's father. Um, I went through a hard time after we broke up because I just felt like it was unfair and all these different things. And, you know, we were being petty and all these different things like that. But I asked God to show me forgiveness. And what he did was let us have a real conversation about, you know, our children, about how we made each other feel in our relationship, about all these things. And for once, after 10 years, I got an apology out of nowhere. Wow. And it's just to stay on the, you know, on the right path and trusting God each and every day. Um, sometimes it's hard. I think people think that um, believing in him is something that's easy. It's absolutely not. But if you have faith, he can do anything. He can show you anything. He can open doors for you. And I just want everybody to know to be encouraged that if anybody's done anything against you, say anything bad against your name, give it to God. Give everything to God and let him seek vengeance on your life. Mm. In Jesus' name, amen. Powerful. All right. Father God, we love you. Thank you for this awesome time. Uh, huh, thank you for your anointing, Lord. And uh, you said that... Uh, we are overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So, so we thank you, God, that we will tell people of the goodness, of your goodness and, and, and of your power. And, and God, as we do these calls, God, as we come closer together to do something on this earth that has never been done, uh, we thank you, God, that you're going ahead of us, God, to move mountains out of the way and to bring people that's going to help us. And we thank you, God, that thousands, millions will be saved because of these calls. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I love y'all, man. Some Amen. of y'all I see shortly. All right. Love y'all, too. Good right. night. Be blessed. Powerful night. Powerful night. Amen. Amen.